Hello everyone, welcome again. So today's lesson will be on industrial chemistry and in this series we've been looking at the production of sodium hydroxide. So in the past two lessons we've looked at all the fundamental knowledge that we need to sort of decipher the, the sodium hydroxide process and in today's lesson we're actually going to look at how we produce it industrially. Okay? So we've done all of the necessary groundwork, we've put it all the foundations there so now we're actually going to see how we actually produce sodium hydroxide in the real world. So first, what is sodium hydroxide? Well, it's a white translucent solid, as you can see here. It's really, really soluble in water because it's part of a group 1 metal compound. And it readily dissociates to form Na plus and OH minus. Okay? This makes it a really strong base, and so we use it very frequently in industry. Now industrially, sodium hydroxide is produced by electrolyzing sodium chloride. So we take brine, or concentrated sodium chloride solution, and we electrolyze it to form sodium hydroxide. Now three different methods are used. There's the mercury process, the diaphragm process, and the membrane process. Okay? So these are the three ones that we're going to cover today. So first, obtaining salt water. So sodium and chloride ions are plentiful in seawater. We see them all the time. However, seawater also contains other ions like calcium, magnesium, iron, and sulfate. So we want pure salt water at a very high concentration, but we don't want all of these. So seawater is a little bit iffy because we don't want these extra ions. So what we do is we precipitate them out with sodium carbonate, sodium hydroxide and calcium chloride. Okay, So the sodium carbonate gets rid of the calcium and, the mag and some of the magnesium. The iron is precipitated out with the sodium hydroxide and the sulfate with the calcium here. Okay, So electrode separation. Each electrolysis method physically separates the cathode and the anode. This is necessary to prevent the products of electrolysis from forming dangerous chemicals. So for instance, NaOH plus chlorine gas gives you sodium hypochlorite, which is bleach, um, sodium chloride, and water. So we don't want to produce this because that's not what we're aiming for. The chlorine gas plus the hydrogen gas could give you hydrogen chloride, which again is bad. We know that that's hydrochloric acid. And so we want to just separate them so that they don't form these dangerous chemicals. So now that we've got sort of a system going, let's talk about what we actually do. So the mercury process is the first one. And historically, it's the first process that we used. So it uses a mercury cathode. So here's our, this silvery blue is the mercury. And at the cathode, the sodium ions are, are reduced to sodium metal. So here's our equation. Na plus plus E minus gives you sodium solid. Okay? The sodium metal, which is this one, actually forms an amalgam. So it sort of forms like almost like an alloy with the mercury and is transported away. So sort of think of it as the sodium metal uh, sort of dissolves in, in a way into the mercury metal. So it kind of just gets sort of trapped in the mercury metal. So now it's moved over to this side. The sodium amalgam is transported to a secondary cell, which is this, this one. So we had the left hand side, and then now we have this side. And in this cell, it reacts with the sodium, reacts with water to form high purity sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. So this cell is full of water, whereas the other one was full of sodium chloride solution. This one's full of water. And what happens is the sodium metal then dissolves in the water and forms a very vigorous process, releasing H2 gas and producing NaOH solution. So it just for, for now, just ignore this Hg 
sodium plus water gives you NaOH plus H2 gas, right? That's the essential reaction that's going on. And then these um, mercuries are just there. They don't react with the water. They just happen to be in this process as well. So now that we've got the actual sodium hydroxide out of our system in the last process, we're going to look at the easiest process, which is producing chlorine. Okay? So at the graphite anode, which is here, chlorine gas is produced. Okay? So we had the brine here. The sodium ions got reduced and then became part of the mercury, which got pumped around to this distilled water. And then we produce the NaOH by using the reaction in the previous slide. So now we're going to look at what happens on this electrode. Okay. So very simply, this electrode, all that happens is Cl minus goes to form Cl2 plus 2E minus. There's actually two of them. Okay. So this process happens at this electrode, and then the chlorine gas goes up and away. Okay. So this is a very simple chemical equation. It's just the oxidation of chloride ions. And so if you were to look at the remaining two processes, the diaphragm cell and the membrane cell, you'll also see this process, which is exactly the same. Okay? So at the anode, you only have to remember ever one equation, and that covers all three processes. So it makes your life a lot easier. Okay? Now, the anode is kept well away from the cathode to prevent the chlorine from reacting with the other chemicals. So if you look here, the chlorine gas is very reactive. And so we want to keep it away from our sodium hydroxide, because we don't want it to maybe um, pollute our sodium hydroxide, because we've already got a fairly pure sodium hydroxide here. So we're, not gonna, we're gonna keep this as far away as possible so that there's no so, uh, chance of pollution, okay? So, in general, the mercury process, which is this process, is very energy intensive. It takes a, a lot of energy. And in particular, even though the voltage is quite low, it takes a huge amount of current. So this process takes a lot of current, which makes a lot of energy, and also uses this very hazardous mercury. So we don't want to use this too much. So we need alternatives. And so our alternative is so the diaphragm cell now. So what happens now, obviously mercury, we know it's bad for you, we know it's a heavy metal, it causes craziness, um, or actually mental, uh, some mental disorders. So we don't want to use that anymore. So we moved to the diaphragm cell. So the diaphragm cell separates the sodium from the chloride by using a permeable asbestos diaphragm. So here we have the brine on this side, the pure water on this side, separated by this semi-permeable asbestos membrane, or asbestos diaphragm. The sodium produced at the cathode is immediately converted into sodium hydroxide. So what happens is 2NaCl plus H2O goes to form 2NaOH plus Cl2 plus H2. So the products are always the same for all three of these processes. So the sodium hydroxide produced by the process is dilute, and the water must be evaporated away to concentrate the solution. Okay, so on this side, the reaction is the same. Chlorine, chloride ions are turning into chlorine gas from that previous equation that I showed you. So the electrons are being moved away. And then this side, the, elect, uh, the electrolysis, I'll show you in a, f in a couple of slides time. So the final product usually contains traces of unreacted sodium chloride because some chloride ions can actually drift across this side through the membrane and pollute your sodium hydroxide. So there's always a bit of contamination. So last one, the membrane cell. The most recently developed in the 1970s separates the two products using polytetrafluoroethylene as the membrane. So instead of using asbestos, we use this polytetrafluoroethene or ethylene, or PTFE, um, and that helps us to, to get purer NaOH. So the membrane permits only sodium ions to pass, so it's semi-permeable, so it is better than the diaphragm process. 
The anode and cathode are on different sides of the membrane. So the anode is on this side, uh, sorry, anode is on this side, left hand side, and the cathode is on the right hand side. So the chlorine is limited to only the anode side, but the sodium can pass through to the other side. So at the cathode, hydrogen gas is removed from the solution, leaving only NaOH. So the electrochemistry of the membrane cell. The reactions are actually identical to the diaphragm cell, which is why I left it out in the previous section, so that I could come back and show you it now, um, just so you're aware. Oxidation reaction. We talked about this. It's the same for all three cells. And there it is. Chlorine, uh, chloride ions turn into chlorine gas plus electrons. Now, the reduction reactions involve the reduction of water. Okay, So the water combined with some electrons gives you hydrogen gas plus 2 OH minus. Okay? So in this part of the cell, the water, it's just pure water on this side. It's brine on this side. Pure water is actually turned into hydrogen gas and OH minus. Okay? So the electrolysis is, turning, is happening here. And the same happens for the diaphragm cell. The only difference between the membrane and diaphragm process is the use of the polytetrafluoroethene membrane as opposed to asbestos. So you produce this OH minus. Now what happens is the sodium ions here are repelled by this positive electrode and attracted by this one and attracted by all these, NA, uh, all these OH minus. So they drift this side forming NaOH, which is what we want. And so that's how it works. These two reactions are all you have to remember for the diaphragm and membrane cell. And for the mercury cell, you have to remember a couple more, plus this one. Okay. Yeah. So products of the membrane cell. The membrane cell consumes the same amount of energy as the diaphragm cell, and much less energy than the mercury process. Okay. Because the mercury is directly reducing sodium ions, it takes more energy than these water-reducing cells like the diaphragm or membrane cell. Additionally, it produces no toxic waste products because there's no mercury and no asbestos because we know asbestos is bad for you. And it produces pure sodium hydroxide without sodium chloride con contaminants. So it's better than the diaphragm cell because it produces much purer NaOH simply because the chloride ions can't fit through the pores of the PTFE. Okay. So that wraps up today's lesson on the industrial manufacture of sodium hydroxide. We looked at the three major processes and how they all work. And we looked at the electrochemistry of each of them. So hopefully you've seen, you now understand how we produce sodium hydroxide in industry. So we'll move on to the question segment and pull this information together. So question 11, why can't ordinary seawater be used in electrolytic cells to produce sodium hydroxide? Well, C is the answer. Seawater contains too many additional salts other than NaCl, which will make the electrolysis all the more difficult. So, there is enough sodium chloride in seawater to be extracted via electrolysis. So these first two are wrong. Now it's these two. Other salts will make it harder to produce pure sodium hydroxide, so we don't want them. So it's obviously C. Which of the following is false? Membranes are constructed with less dangerous materials than the two other types. That's true. Membrane cells use less energy than mercury cells. Again, that's true because we're not reducing sodium. Mercury cells produce purer sodium hydroxide than diaphragm cells. Again, that's true because there's no chloride ions that can move into the sodium hydroxide cell, so that's good. So D must be the answer. So we went through this. Mercury cells require a lot more power to pump the mercury as well as to reduce the, um, reduce the sodium. Mercury cells produce purer sodium hydroxide because the diaphragm cells can be contaminated with sodium chloride. The latter's membranes, so the membrane cell do not allow chloride ions to pass into the sodium hydro hydroxide solution. So that's false, because the diaphragm cells have a much lower purity 
the membrane cells. Okay. So, question 13. Write a set of equations showing the transformation of sodium in the mercury electrolysis cell. So first things first, sodium ions have to turn into sodium metal. So, sodium ions turn into sodium metal and the chloride ions turn into chlorine gas. Then the sodium ions, uh, sodium metal, sorry, mixes with mercury to produce the so sodium mercury amalgam, which is this one. And then the sodium reacts with water to form hydrogen gas and NaOH, and then the mercury is recycled. Okay, so that's the general steps for sodium production in the mercury cell. Sodium ion turns into sodium metal. Sodium metal turns into sodium amalgam. Then sodium amalgam reacts with water to form sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. So there's the four steps. So compare the advantages and disadvantages of the mercury and diaphragm cells. Okay, so the mercury cell and the diaphragm cell. So here's our table. So the mercury cells produce very high purity sodium hydroxide because um, there's no possible chance of the chloride ions polluting your sodium hydroxide solution. Asbestos free. Asbestos is bad for you. It causes you know respiratory issues. So it's good that they don't have it. But it contains obviously the more deadly toxic mercury. And also because of the pumping requirements as well as the energy required to reduce the sodium ion, you have a very high energy requirement. So mercury cells consume a lot of energy and have lots of this mercury. Diaphragm cells are a lot cheaper to run because they don't need to pump the, um, the mercury around. Mercury free, which is better than being asbestos free, I suppose. It does contain hazardous asbestos, which I mentioned is bad. And the sodium hydroxide is usually contaminated with sodium chloride because the diaphragm doesn't stop all of the chloride ions from, from getting through. Okay? So they're the comparative advantages and disadvantages. So explain why the membrane process has, has pretty much replaced the mercury process, the membrane process and the mercury process. Mercury cells take more energy to run than the membrane cells because of the pumping and reduction of sodium. Mercury cells are also harmful to the environment as they lose small amounts of mercury to the environment each day. So one of the figures that I've seen is that mercury cells may lose up to 100 grams of mercury to the environment uh, for every ton of NaOH that they produce. So that's a lot. Okay. Mercury can form toxic organic compounds that are absorbed by living things, so bioaccumulation and those kind of things. So mercury is really dangerous. And the mercury concentrates in the food chain and may cause nervous system disorders in larger creatures, such as us, humans. So we really don't want to be using the mercury process anymore simply because we know of the risks of mercury in our systems. So in Japan, in an area that produces a lot of sodium hydroxide called Minamata, there's a disease even named after that area because of the mercury in the fish which have been eaten by humans. Okay? So that's why the membrane cell has nearly wholly replaced the mercury process simply because of the environmental issues associated with the mercury process. So that concludes today's lesson on the production of sodium hydroxide and it concludes this series on sodium hydroxide production. So we've looked at how we produce sodium hydroxide, what it's used for, and hopefully you've learned something about the electrolysis of sodium hydroxide. So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson.